hi everyone. I'm Stella Sibi and I am a host of this uh, Inspire show. I always uh, talking about health and uh, I always have a guest who can inspire you and motivate you on some way. Uh, hi, today here is Sheila Carroll. Hi, Carol. Hi, thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. I, I appreciate it. Uh, you are a pediatrician and life and weight coach. Can you tell me something about that? Sure. I am a U.S.-based pediatrician. I've been a doctor for all, over 23 years now taking care of kids and babies and their families. Um, I'm also an obesity medicine um, physician. So I have some uh, special training in helping people with weight loss. And then I became a life coach on top of that, which is completely different than a medical approach. Um, but I experienced um because I experienced joining a life coaching program myself and had such a wonderful experience and thought that all the skills and tools that I learned doing that would benefit my patients. And for me, it's really my patients parents because I take care of <laughs> I take care of kids. But I, you know, I thought the skills that I learned in life coaching would help the parents be able to take care of their kids mm -hmm. really, really well. So I went out and got extra training in becoming a life coach. And yeah, so that's now what I do. I help parents um, help their kids create, I help parents create a healthy lifestyle at home. Um, so that really, so that everybody in the family can, their health can thrive. It's very nice. Because I I think uh, child child eating some many times like their parents so uh, they what they see it's that it's a normal for them and uh, and I say always that uh, parents have to uh, give example yes. about healthy lifestyle what is it and they had to understand. What is healthy lifestyle? Because I think uh, here they need a knowledge because we didn't see it from before from my grand for our grandparents or something because it was a different life and now it's a different life. We we can buy everything what we want and we can eat <laughs> as many we want. So it it's not uh, it's hard to to say no for something and I think it's parents it's it's the most important thing what they think and what what are they doing yes i agree exactly yeah the environment that we're living in today the modern food environment these highly processed foods that are really marketed and well marketed to parents but really marketed to kids in a you know aggressive manner um and it's it's these foods that are really, really wreaking havoc on our metabolic health. Um, and our metabolic health is so intimately connected to our mental health as well. The whole body is just one big, you know, it's not like mental health is different than <laughs> health below your neck. It's all the same. All connected. Kind of, yes. Yeah. It's all connected going on. And our ancient human bodies weren't have not evolved and were not designed to handle the foods that are being thrown at us today. So parents, to take control of your child's health and your own health, you really need exactly what you said, education about what foods are gonna work for your body. And then, so why to do it? <laughs> And then the um, motivation and the staying power and the willingness to stick with it, even when it's 
challenging. Um, but, you know, it gets less challenging when you start to see the positive benefits of things. And so that's why I always recommend that parents change first. So, for example, if you have a child who's struggling with their weight or struggling eating, you know, a lot of processed foods, I highly recommend that the parent change themselves first and understand, um, you know, what those foods are doing. And then they'll be able to help their child much more effectively. Yes, I agree. It's a, it's a great thing. Yeah. <laughs> what are you, yeah. what are you doing? Uh, uh, so when they need you, when they, they have some uh, health issue or just because of overrated quits or when, when they ask your help. Sorry, we cut out Sorry, a little bit there. Out. We're across the world from <laughs> each other. <laughs> it just blows my mind uh, too that we can talk to each other this far away on Zoom. It's so yeah. incredible. Um, so people reach out to me when they have, well, for a lot of different reasons. If the parent is really struggling with how they're, they're thinking and feeling, number one, about themselves, but also how they're showing up as the parent, but mostly parents reach out to me when they want to make a change for their child and they need help on knowing what to do and how to do it. Um, yeah, th those are the main, those are the main people that reach out for help. Are they reaching out to you sometimes when they, their children are overweight or when they have diabetes, for example, or... Or some yeah, sometimes, yeah, sometimes it's a diagnosis. They might go to the doctor and the doctor says, oh, you have, we did lab work, you have prediabetes, or you have um, something called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, mm -hmm. where is like, fat being stored in your liver? Um, or sometimes it's the parents just noticing their child gaining weight. Um, sometimes the child is is wanting, you know, some help themselves. And again, I only work with the parents because, I, you know, it takes a lot of um, advanced cognitive skills, thinking skills that require a, pre a mature prefrontal cortex. You know, you need to be able to think about your own thinking, think about your future self. Think about the decisions that you're making right now and how they're going to affect your future. And, you know, little kids can't do that for themselves. Even if they mm -hmm. really wanted to, their brains are just too immature for that. Um, so even though sometimes little kids really want to change um, it, it, and they're trying their hardest, it's just really hard to overcome, you know, the primitive drive in us to eat the food that tastes really good in the moment and and make the changes that need to be made to create sustainable weight loss or sustainable good metabolic health. But parents can do that for their kids. And as their kids age, their kids will learn to take over doing that for themselves. Are you uh, helping them with uh, recipes too, or just uh, you are giving the knowledge what is the the good food or a good diet for them? Well, I like the idea of people deciding for themselves what they want to eat. Um, there's and because if if I give somebody a diet and tell them you need to eat this, this, and this, you know, then it's like, then they need me. <laughs> then they are always going to need, you know, they're always going to feel like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do when I'm by myself? But so the strategy is let's learn how these different foods and different food choices affect your health. Then you decide what you want to eat you because what you like might be different than what I like and the whole idea is we want to create a way of eating that's really enjoyable that you're going to be willing to stick with for the rest of your life and not that you're 
feeling punished or deprived or unhappy eating. You know, we want, we want uh, people to enjoy their life and enjoy eating and enjoy the health that comes along with good eating. So I don't, you know, I have a billion recipes, but you know, I don't, I'll give people recipes to start out with if they want, but um, really the whole idea is you decide what's best for you. And that's, that's the whole idea is that the parents take over the health for themselves and their kids. So, uh, the, um, what are, how are you starting to, how to, with, with, with parents, how to develop that new lifestyle? Well, most people come with pretty specific pain points, um, pretty specific things that they want to work on first. And so we usually just address the issues, you know, kind of the lowest hanging fruit is kind of the easiest way to start. You know, for example, there's more to a healthy lifestyle than just food. There's getting good sleep. There's getting, you know, movement every day. And there's learning like social emotional uh, regulation skills. So uh, in addition to the nutrition. So, you know, it depends on where the parents feel they're most struggling. And then we can, you know, individual, I can individualize it to help them start where they are. One place I always really like to start is uh, the relationship between the parent and the child um, and making sure that, you know, any time we want to be changing something for our kids, we don't want the message to be, we're changing this because we're, we think you need to be different to be lovable or to be more valuable or to be worthy. Like that is not the message we want to be sending at all. We want a really good solid connection there. I love you just the way you are. I accept you just the way you are. And I've learned that, you know, to be really healthy, we should sleep more or uh, eat in a different way. And so we're changing things to improve our health as a family, not to change you because there's something wrong with you. So just to make sure, you know, because so many diets, at least here in the US, so much diet talk and diet, they, we just feel bad about ourselves. They're like, you've got to change. Something's not right. You're eating too much. There's a problem here. And the problem is you. <laughs> and that's just not a good message well, it's not a good message for anyone, but a hundred and hundred percent not a good message for a child ever to hear. You know, so we, I recommend parents don't even talk about weight and don't even talk about. That's not why we're changing at all. We're changing to improve health. Yes, it's it's a good point. <laughs> I usually because I'm a health and fitness coach. And uh, and I usually say that uh, don't uh, think about your weight. Think about about your health, your future health, because that's more important. And yes. don't measure yourself every week because it's not because I giving yeah a uh, movement I uh, exercises and I always saying it's more more important your muscles and your moving not not your measurements yeah <laughs> well the truth the truth is you can be very thin and still be very unhealthy yes and so that's not the goal the goal is not to reach a certain size or to reach a certain number on the scale the goal is to really learn to live in this modern world that we're living in in a way that supports our very ancient human bodies so that you can do whatever you want in life and you won't be sick. You won't be restricted by your health. You won't, you'll have enough energy and you'll be feeling good. Yes. That's, that's the <laughs> most important thing. Yes. <laughs> uh, what are the, the common? <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> what are the common mistakes parents can make when trying to have their children? I think sometimes parents um, have certain beliefs that limit their willingness to try to change. For example, if so a lot of parents have a belief for my child is a very picky eater. And if you believe your child is a picky eater, if you really believe that, then that's going to affect the food choices you offer your child or the expectations that you have of your child to eat these different foods. Um, so some, yeah, that's one mistake I see. Sometimes, you know, parents think my, my child will never eat that. My child, you know, they, they just have very limiting beliefs about what their child is capable of doing. And sometimes I say like, well, in a, if this is completely like a made up situation, but if all the processing, all the processed foods in the world went completely away for some reason, and we only had whole, real whole unprocessed foods, do you think your kids would eat to survive? <laughs> 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 and of course they would, right? We all learned, you know, we all learned kind of what we're capable of during COVID. Do you have to stay away from people? Do you have to stay in your house? You know, and so I think that that's something that at least here in the United States, there's kind of this belief that kids eat kid food and kid food is this highly processed chicken nuggets, French fries, and, and oh, it's fine for kids to eat highly processed foods and soda and juices because that's what kids do. And kids, kids need that because they're kids, they're running around the, and they're just trying to have fun and they, they shouldn't have to worry about it. Um, but unfortunately in today's world, our kids, we, we have to worry about it for our kids. And so I think that's the one mistake. Well, you know, it's funny. I say this to my friends, even who, even even kids who don't have a weight problem, who aren't struggling with extra weight, they shouldn't be drinking soda so or nice. fruit juice. They shouldn't be doing, they should be eating, we all should be eating the exact same way, you know? And meaning like we all should be eating much less processed foods and much more real whole unprocessed foods, fruits, vegetables, meat, you know, whole grains, things yes. like that healthy fats, um, even if your child is not overweight, they shouldn't be eating too much processed foods either. Um, so that's the, that's the struggle that parents of, well, one struggle that parents of overweight kids have is that their kid, their child's friends might be eating in a very different way. Um, and then they, they go to soccer practice and then there's treats after practice or they go to a birthday party and there's all of you know so it's just the water that we're swimming in and I think there's a big gap of knowledge for parents yes. of the dangers of added sugars and fructose and high fructose corn syrup and sports drinks and soda and I mean I could go on and on um yes but I think so there's a huge education piece um, and the trick is the somehow I'm trying to figure out, but going on podcasts like this is trying to help spread the message of like, how do we raise parents awareness to the probable and potential harm of these foods, even though your child might look fine on the outside, the metabolic consequences of having these large glucose spikes and raising yes. your insulin up all the time. And, you know, the damage is being done and patterns are being set now that are going to show up in your child 20 years from now that could yes. be prevented if we could, if we could somehow just try to, you know, reduce some of the processed foods and some of the added sugars that we're exposing our kids to. Yes, I agree. I when I I had now growing up uh, girls, 
<laughs> but uh, I I didn't buy sodas at all at home. We yeah. drink just water. Yeah. So they they used to drink water. Mm -hmm. So they yeah. they sometimes when go out they they drink sometimes a coke or or something else. But but it was just rare. I think it's more important what we are doing every day. Yes. And if we do sometimes we eating or drinking something, but it's not healthy, it's not problem. But it's more important what we are doing every day, our habits. Right. And if 80 percent of the time or something, you know, you decide on the number you want to shoot for, but the majority of the time. Yes. Yes. I I always telling to my clients that we have to implement new habits because yeah. the new habits if we starting maybe in the beginning it's it's hard it looks like it's hard but actually uh we 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 think it's not it's hard but it's not hard because it just lim our limiting beliefs that it's hard it's not because 100%. yes because because we have to know what is good for our body and if we if we if we put it in our mind that it yes it's 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 important for our body because we are living in this body all <laughs> all our life so so we we have to uh, keep it it on on a healthy way to, to eat on a healthy way to to be energized and fit uh, mm. always to yeah. avoid the diabetes and prediabetes and and uh, uh, every issues the uh, health issues we yes. can yeah yeah I always say you know we need to be helping our body our body is always trying to help us it's always yes. trying to keep us safe and keep us alive um and it is storing fat here storing fat there raising up this hormone to help you uh, decreasing this, you know, our body is reacting to everything we're doing to it. You know, for example, if you get two hours of sleep one night, your body has all of these physiologic changes that to try to help you stay alive until you can get some more rest. And so the whole idea is how about we start to help our own body? <laughs> you know, we use yeah. this this thinking part of our brain, our prefrontal cortex, okay, what is the best thing for me, for my body? Not just in the moment, right this second, but for tomorrow mm -hmm. and, uh, and two weeks from now and two months and two years, 20 years from now. So yeah, I mean, it, the human body, it's just so fascinating. It's so fascinating, even as a doctor, uh, you know, and I'm really, really interested in metabolism and I read about it all the time. And it's just <laughs> so fascinating what our body, how our body is functioning and how our body creates energy for us, stores energy, burns energy. Um, and it's it's incredible that our body has been able to handle all the stuff we have thrown at it, alcohol, drugs, you know, highly processed foods, chemicals, dyes, emulsifiers, additives, like added sugars. It's, it's pretty incredible. So. <laughs> yes, but with time, it, it would be health issues if we, yeah, if over we time, don't change body, it. Yeah, your body just says, you know what, I'm like, I'm, I don't know what to do anymore. Uh, and, and that's when we start to see and feel the downstream effects of the choices that we made a while ago. Yes, we can well, build idea. our head. We can build our head or we can build our our health issues. Yes, yeah. So the whole idea is to try to get motivated beforehand and make the changes now so that you never experience those negative health and you know health consequences and have to dig yourself out of a hole. And that's what I'm hoping parents are willing to do, like help your kids now so they don't enter their 20s as with prediabetes and with mm -hmm. you know, fatty liver and things like that that are 100% preventable um, by lifestyle. Um, so...
And um, what do you love about what you do? Oh, well, I love helping. I love helping. Well, I love the, I love helping the kids and I love seeing them be so healthy. And frankly, they're so clueless when they're healthy. They don't even realize they're they're in such good health, you know. So but I, I love helping the parents um, also really step into their power and because parents love their kids so much. And sometimes they feel so helpless and frustrated and, um, and confused, all of these feelings that they don't know what to do to help their child. But when you can, when you can show up as the parent, like you want to be, and you can really look in the mirror at the end of the day and say, I did the best job I could, and I'm doing the best I can. And I, I'm, I'm not giving up. I'm just going to keep trying. I'm going to keep helping my child. I'm going to keep helping myself. Like that's so empowering and so freeing. Um, and it really like the trickle down effect of that, because those kids, if you have a parent doing that, your, ch that child is going to see the parent doing that. And then the child is going to learn that at a very early age. And then their life is going to open up. And then their children are going to learn that. So it, it has the potential, this like ripple effect out into the world mm -hmm. of, of owning your own health. And it's more than just health because some of the skills and tools that we, that I teach my clients and teach the kids are, you know, yes, you apply them to the behaviors of health, but you can also apply them to your relationships with people. You can reply, you can apply them to um, things at work or in school and it, they're just um, the coaching part is ways to think and skills and tools to help you learn to think in a way that helps you and to become aware of patterns of thinking that's not helping you and then when you're aware of it you can decide on purpose whether you want to change that or not yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> and it's, it's so, so nice. <laughs> it's so <laughs> nice. You you are helping not just for not not just to the kids. You helping to their parents, and they will live healthier, also. Yeah. And they are making example for their children, and their children will make example to our to their children. So it's it's very nice. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's really. It's really, really powerful work. And um, yeah, it feels, well, I feel so grateful that I came in, in contact with it because I didn't learn it in my medical school. I learned a lot of super interesting facts and a lot of super, you know, medicine is very, very interesting, but there's a disconnect between what we're learning in medical school, the facts, and then the implementation like, how do you get people like, you know, if you have somebody with diabetes, you want them to exercise, get good sleep, eat this way, avoid these foods, eat this. Okay, that's good advice. But then the person goes home. And how do they do that themselves, if they've never done it before? And they don't know how to do it. So the advice is useless, unless they can implement the advice. And that's, that's what coaching, for me at least, that's what coaching taught me and taught me how to teach my patients and my clients. It's very nice. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I think usually doctors don't help on a, on a always uh, giving advices, but usually giving uh, medicine. And yes. they they yeah. don't then they don't really want to to change your lifestyle. They just doing okay. Yeah, change, just, change something. Not, that we're just not they taught don't that. Care. That is not the you know you know I I you know most doctors that I know do care about their patients, but it is just not the medical approach. At least here in the United States, you know we when you go to medical school, 
They don't teach you behavioral, how to help your patients change their behaviors. They teach you all the things about the disease process and yes, what medicines to use, <laughs> you know, but there's not a lot of focus on, well, prevention for sure. There's no mm -hmm. focus on prevention. There's no education of doctors on nutrition. Um, and there's no, you know, there's certainly no time spent on how to help your patients change their behaviors, which is what everybody needs. Um, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. So it's, it's I think we, we have to change the root root cause of the yeah. problem not not the just the medicine to give the, the root cause to to change everything right. our our lifestyle and we can maybe be healthier yeah yeah if yeah so, well, sure. we, we all need to start understanding that if we don't change our lifestyle then we will end up sick we will end up needing medicine. We will. I mean, if you look at the statistics of where where obesity is going, where diabetes is going, where Alzheimer's is going, it, it's it's so scary. And uh, yes. you know, but we do have the power to change some of those outcomes. A lot of those outcomes solely by our lifestyle, what you eat how much you exercise, how you sleep, and your stress and emotional regulation skills. And those, all of those things are under every single adult's control. And they can control themselves. They can control those things and hopefully never experience the negative health outcomes. Down yes, the line. I agree. No. I uh, <laughs> So you have... Uh... 10 steps to transform your child head. But, uh, and you have this free download. Yeah, it's download. just a free guide. It's just, it's a start. Um, it, yeah, 10 steps to transform your child's health. It's basically a big overview of things that you, a parent can do. Because my, my approach is I focus on the parent and what the parent can control. Because if we're asking a child to change their habit, okay, child, turn off the TV or turn off your screen, and then they decide not to do that, then we're kind of left, that's out of our control, what our child does, right? However, parents, where is the parent's control in that situation? The parent's control is actually, do they have a phone? Or what? what's the boundary with the phone? Um, don't leave it up to the child to turn it off. But at the two hour mark, oh, the phone goes back on the counter over here. You know, just rules and boundaries and holding the boundaries. And so it's the 10 step guide or the, the, the freebie I created is to really just give a broad overview of several different areas that the parent actually controls and the parent could how the if the parent uh, read that and looked at those things and really asked themselves a the question what's under my control here oh the food i buy and bring into the house so if i bring in food you know say chips or cookies crackers and then i just expect the child to have self control quote and not mm -hmm. eat them <laughs> that's you know that's putting all of the all of the work on the child but the parent where the parents control is is what foods are available in the house and mm -hmm. then the parents the parents control is how they're role modeling the behaviors they want their child to see uh they're modeling their relationship with their body the, and how they talk about their body um there's just so many things that parents have in their control that if they really focused on that and kind of tuned that up and dialed into what they can control their child's health will benefit just from mm -hmm. them working on themselves yeah nice <laughs> um what is your message to my listener for for parents <laughs> yeah well my message is that there's so much you can do uh, to help your child, help your children thrive in this world. 
that we're all living in today with all the different processed foods, all the screen usage, the sedentary behavior, all of the things that are leading, you know, leading us down the road against good health. And parents, if you become actively aware of the things that the human body actually needs to maintain good health, you know, if you actually have to work at it, because if we just go with the flow and do the easy thing all the time, our kids' health will suffer and our own health will definitely suffer and our kids' health will suffer. So my message is to parents, your kids need you and you can do it. <laughs> and it's not as hard as you think it's going to be. And you're going to feel so much better and your child will feel so much better, it will be so worth it to make these changes. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. I'm happy you were here. It was a great Oh, thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank you. And I will put down your links. And okay, everyone Thank check you, your <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Be here. Bye. Bye. Thanks.